We're going to continue this discussion with the next part of the process. We've talked about replication. Now we're going to talk about transcription. Transcription is the production of RNA, an RNA molecule, from a DNA molecule. So messenger RNA is the principal molecule that is produced during the process of transcription, and it is produced in the nucleus and then moves into the cytoplasm to be used by the ribosomes to make proteins. And this is produced by an enzyme known as RNA polymerase. Pre-mRNA is an immature molecule which is incompletely processed mRNA and then is has to be processed in order to be used. So this is a diagram that shows the, the production of mRNA. And similar to the replication process, the DNA has to be unzipped and untwisted. And then an RNA polymerase molecule comes along and again using complementary base pairs produces an RNA molecule um, which then goes out of the nucleus and is used for the production of protein. The third part of the process is translation. And translation is the production of protein from a DNA or from an RNA molecule. And key to the, um, the genetic code is something called a codon. And a codon is a sequence of three nucleotide nucleotides on the me messenger RNA. And each of these three nucleotide sequences codes for a specific protein that is carried by transfer RNA, which we'll talk about transfer RNA in a second. So the genetic code is the translation of a nucleotide sequence of codons into an amino acid sequence, which ultimately makes up a unique protein molecule. At the end of the production of a particular protein molecule is something known as a stop codon, which is a three nucleotide sequence that tells the ribosome to stop and to clip off the protein. Similarly, there's a start codon, which is the codon that tells the ribosome to connect and begin the process of amino acid sequence. Now, ribosomes are the organelles responsible for the mRNA produ and protein production. And there's actually specific RNA that, along with proteins, makes up the structure of the ribosome. And the third type of, it, of RNA is called transfer RNA. And transferred RNA is a specialized RNA that brings amino acids to the ribosome in order to produce a protein. So these are the three different uh, types of RNA. Over here is the messenger RNA. Which, which is a single strand of sequence of nucleotides. This is the ribosomal RNA, which is mixed with protein in order to form the ribosome. And here is a transfer RNA, which is a piece of RNA with an amino acid stuck on the end of it. So in the process of, of making a protein, you start out with transcription, where the DNA unzips and produces a strand of messenger RNA, and here is the complementary base pairing that has to occur. This then moves out of the nucleus and into the cytoplasm, and along comes a ribosome, which attaches to the mRNA strand, and then begins to read it. And the transfer RNA comes in, actually from over here, with an amino acid. These sequences are then paired up, and these proteins, or, or these amino acids, are attached to the ever-growing polypeptide chain, which will ultimately become a protein molecule. Now, in the DNA, there is DNA that does not code for specific amino acids, and this is called non-coding protein. And parts of this non-coding protein are sometimes called introns. An intron is a piece of non-coding protein that is part of the pre-mRNA, but then is subsequently removed. Exons are also sequences, but these sequences remain in the mRNA, unlike the introns. And then there can be, between these introns and exons, there can be alternative slice, splicing, which is a process where different genes are, are crossed over into different RNA sequences. 
And sometimes this can be this can be produce a small piece of mRNA, which is produced by the introns and doesn't really code for any protein. Non-coding DNA also determines the structure of the chromatin and the chromosome. Now, in our somewhat what I think is hubris or arrogance, we tend to call DNA that doesn't code for any proteins junk DNA. And the truth is there are many great functions of this so-called junk DNA and it's not really junk. Just because we can't actually figure out what, what its purpose is doesn't mean that it's junk. Genetic engineering is a process where gen genes are manipulated. The techniques are used to artificially change DNA in order to improve the organism in some way. DNA recombination is when the genes of one organism are inserted into the genes of a second organism. So for example, you can take an organism and modify its genes and produce what's known as a genetically modified organism. And this is any organism that results from d DNA recombination. Transgenic organisms are organisms where the gene in the DNA recombination comes from a different organism, a completely different organism. And in bacteria, we'll talk about this when we talk about bacteria, you will find rings of DNA in the bacteria cytoplasm that are called plasmids. And these plasmids have specific functions and structures. And one function of a plasmid is something called antibiotic resistance. So when an organism develops resistance to an antibiotic, the mechanism for doing that is coded in a plasmid, which is how the, the resistance to antibiotics can be passed from one bacteria to another. Now, insulin is a great example of a DNA recombinant um, organism or uh, process. In, in the old days, when insulin was first discovered, the only way to produce insulin was to extract it from animal pancreas. And Eli Lilly and Company, which is the company I work for, used to produce insulin in this manner. And they had literally thousands of cattle and pigs because you could get both beef insulin and um, pork insulin. Um, and they would slaughter these animals and then take the pancreas and extract the, the insulin. Now the problem was, in addition to the fact that you had to slaughter a bunch of animals in order to do this, the problem was also that the, the protein was not human and therefore ultimately would produce a, a, a immunologic response and people would become insulin resistant. And what they, what they ended up doing is they could take the specific gene for the production of insulin from a human, take that gene and put it into bacteria in a transgenic process or a DNA recombination process, and then these bacteria would produce human insulin. And because it was human insulin, it did not cause the immunologic response. And so this, this kind of genetic recombination like, was absolutely critical for the production of a lot of uh, proteins that are used as medicines. Insulin is an example. Growth hormone is another example where they take the gene for production of growth hormone and produce it in bacteria so that it can be given to people the, the, the thing is, is that it, it leads to an almost infinite supply of, of the compound. There's also situations where you can manipulate genes in order to, to uh, produce a normal gene. And they, this is called gene therapy. And one area where they've been trying to do this is with sickle cell anemia, where they manipulate the gene to produce, instead of producing sickle hemoglobin, it can produce normal hemoglobin. Eugenics is a term that came into being in the 1900s, early 1900s. It's a discredited process for manipulating the breeding of humans 
in order to make the human race better. And it's not unlike the idea of, of breeding cows or horses to make better cows and horses. And that's part of the reason it's, it's discredited is because it's considered ethically um, un, un, inappropriate to manipulate the human race. Cloning is a process where you take the genes of one animal or plant and produce a genetically identical twin. There has never been human cloning. Um, there's a famous sheep named Dolly that was a sheep that was produced with cloning. Plants, uh, cloning plants has been done for a long time and is actually something that is fairly easy to do at this point. We'll finish up our discussion here by talking about errors of replication. Now remember, replication is the process of producing uh, DNA, so errors in replication are known as mutations. Small random changes in the DNA that are because of miscopying of the DNA or damaging of the DNA. One type of mutation is called a point mutation, which means that a single base is changed in the DNA molecule. Another type is called a frame shift mutation, where a single base is either removed or added, and then the whole frame of that DNA molecule is changed. By that I mean that everything is moved one step over, which changes the sequence. Uh, significantly. And mutations are usually either harmful or in many cases neutral or silent, but almost never beneficial. A silent change is a change in DNA that has no expression in the phenotype of the organism. So here are some examples or types of mutation. The first thing that can happen, these are all chromosomes, is you can have the, a deletion of the section of the chromosome with these two ends coming together. So that's called a deletion mutation. Another type is a duplicate, duplication mutation where a, a section of the chromosome is duplicated and the, as you can see the chromosome becomes longer. A third type is called an inversion where a section of the chromosome is inverted and put in backwards. A fourth type is called an insertion, where one chromosome is inserted into the other chromosome, and and a section, so a section of this chromosome is taken out and put on here, and then this one is lost. And so you have two, instead of these two, you have a shorter one, which is minus this section, and a longer one, which where the section was added. And then translocation occurs when a section of one chromosome goes to the other one, and then a complementary section goes back to this one. So this one is made up of this plus this piece, and this one is made up of this piece plus this piece. And so all these various things can happen, and they're almost never beneficial. So if you start out here, you see there's no mutation. This is the what things are supposed to look like, and here's the effect on the RNA and the subsequent amino acid. A silent mutation, you see the C is changed to a T. In the RNA, it's changed to AAA, but because these two both code for lysine, you have the same outcome, so it's, it doesn't appear. The third is called nonsense, which means that the result, which is here you're changing a T for an A, which changes this to a U, and, and this actually codes for stop. So this protein is stopped prematurely. And then missense is when you have some addition or subtraction to the to the to the to the G or to the codon in such a way that you code for different mRNA, which codes for different amino acids. In some cases, it conserves the function of the protein, and some it does not. Now, this shows what happens. Here was the point mutation where one gene was, one amino acid was changed, or one base pair was changed. 
But in a frame shift, you can have either a deletion or exertion. Now what I meant, if you didn't understand what I meant by a frame shift, you can see it here. Let's say we delete this A right here. And what ends up happening is this whole section moves over one step. Well, because it moves over one step, this is still the same. So you have the same amino acid, but all the rest of these are different. This was an arginine, but now it becomes a glycine. This was a histamine, now it becomes a lysine. This was a serine, stays a serine. Aspartine becomes a um, lysine and so forth. And so you can see that you know, a, a deleted frame shift can change things dramatically, as can an insertion. If you add a G here, then every sub, all the subsequent amino acids are potentially different. 